when the goal is to become famous, people like me, people choose me, people trust me more than my competitors. The goal is to reach as many people as possible every week, talk to them about something that matters to them, and then let time and your reputation build yep. the result from there. Welcome to the Maven Marketing Podcast. Today is Maven Monday. I'm your host, Brandon Welch, and I'm joined by my co-host, Friday Flannel Caleb. It's Monday. It is Monday, but it is Friday in this room, and it yeah. is Flannel Friday. It's it is. Bust Out Your Flannel Day. And right. this is the place where we answer your real-life flannel marketing questions to help you eliminate waste in advertising, grow your business, and achieve the big dream. And the big dreamers are planning this week. Is that what I hear? Yes, it is fourth quarter. Fourth quarter. Welcome Can you believe fourth it? Quarter. Fourth quarter. We're in the the home stretch of the year. So naturally your brain starts looking at next year. And, and uh, this year and what you've and, done and should I do all the same things I did? Should I change something? Yes. Uh, and that's that's where we're, we start looking ahead. And we have an awesome question this uh, this yeah, this morning. This morning. Can I? It's probably like uh, Tuesday morning. This morning. No, it's so from we this it. week. Actually, we got it. Um, and they said, "Hey guys, with the election year coming up, hey, there's an election year next year. There's an election year. Uh, with the election year coming up, I'm wondering if we should look at moving our TV budget to YouTube for 2024. What are your thoughts? Such so, a great question. Such yeah, a relevant question. It is." And uh, we give a tiny bit more context in just a second. But this whole thing with election year, um, if you buy media or advertising, you know um, there is a reality to things get noisy. There's mm -hmm. a, things called political windows, especially on um, you know uh, national election years. Yeah. And yeah. so things can just get uh, – inventory can get tight if you don't know how to buy it right. So yeah. this client is uh, – it's actually a friend client of ours. Uh, very wise to say that uh, because that is that can be a thing if you don't buy media right. Yep. Uh, but a little more background. Um, tell us about this uh, yeah. person that asked this question. So they are a medical clinic in the optometry vision category, right? Awesome. Um, they have five locations around the area. They're more of a regional. They're not a single location. And, mm -hmm. and they've been um, growing consistently over the last, how long have they been in business? 25, 30 years? Um, longer. Longer than that. Yeah. Yeah. Very well established company. Yeah. Um, and they've been doing heavy local branding. They've been using this yeah. TV campaign. They ramped up the the growth um, speed. They, yeah. They started doing, a, they built an awesome business little by little over the years. And then four or five years ago, they started really investing local and heavy. Yeah. And they've been doing that for, yeah, four or five years. Heavy now. into local branding, I should say. And yeah. And then, yeah. Which, so, which makes them powerful. They're well known. If you say their name uh, in our area, you'll, people know exactly what you're talking about Absolutely, and yeah. where you're talking about. We call that being a household name. And mm -hmm. so they've they've been achieving and maintaining that status, uh, growing very nicely. It's a great, great company. Yeah. And so it's a good question. We're going to break it down how to arrive at the answer because um, that's a relevant question across a lot of media. Should I trade my traditional media dollars for my digital media dollars? Mm -hmm. And um, we're going to challenge that to a higher question as usual. Uh -huh. And I want to say the very first thing we have to start with, and if you have found yourself going, oh, man, that looks fun and flashy, and mm -hmm. all the, quote, sophisticated marketers are doing that, the number one thing you should ask is, what is the goal at hand? Yeah. What are we actually trying to make happen? Because yes. this goes to the heart of what plagues the media industry and the marketing uh, industry. The reason business owners are so disappointed with a lot of their decisions in marketing is because they don't ask first, what am I trying to make happen? And yes. They jump at this shiny object and they think, oh, I'll hire some you know, young nerd to help me with all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And instead of starting with a really methodical human business equation, we go look for this flash in the pan, shiny object media. Yep. And I got nothing against the media as yep. such. Yeah. Uh, but what you need to know instead is that every media can drive a different result mm -hmm. and every result requires a different message and media equation, right? Yes. So anytime you're saying, should I trade X media for X media, in this case, TV for online video or TV for YouTube is mm -hmm. kind of what he was asking. Um, the answer is, it depends. It mm -hmm. depends on the goal. Yeah. Um, every media has a different strength. We have used them all. We've spent gazillions of dollars on TV, radio, digital, mm -hmm. Facebook, Meta, YouTube, OTT, streaming, billboards, print, 
we even bought bathroom stall advertising <laughs> when yeah. the, when it called for it. Yeah. And um, what I can tell you is all can work, but all are dependent on the result you're trying to make happen. That's right. So you know this business. What can you tell me, Mr. Co-host? <laughs> That's me. And your fabulous flannel. Oh, thank you. What do you know about them that they're trying to make happen? Okay, so they are not your cheapest, uh, f- you know, fast fly-by night. Mm. Uh, we think about some of the... Um, retail competitors. The other retail competitors in this mm. eye space. You've probably seen their commercials. Um, but here, they're locally known. And mm-hmm. locally grown, it feels like mm-hmm. a, a, yeah. a, cheesy, a cheesy. This is an organic, a cheesy business. line. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, they're they're focused on quality patients, and they have long term, long standing quality patients. They're not all about discounts, cheap deals. They're not trying to get you the cheapest mm-hmm. frames, the cheapest lenses, um, and they they focus on your whole eye health, right? A mm. lot of these other places, it's like, give me my script, I'm gonna go, and then I'm gonna go shop online, you know, online, buy, buy, buy a cheap set of frames, buy your. Buy one, get one type stuff. Yes. And they're they're looking at the quality of it. They also believe in your eye health, mm. which I think is important. They're doctors. I think it's important. I think it's important. Um, mm-hmm. they're doctors and I I think there's there's a lot of power in that. They're not trying to rush you through, just throw a script at you mm. and get you some contacts or glasses. Mm. They are concerned with is are your eyes healthy? Are they um, do you show so any signs of disease or yeah? How much time do you spend in front of a computer? Yeah. Are you a golfer? They have certain lenses for that. They have certain coatings for that. They have yeah. certain manufacturers. They and... offer eye therapy. Yeah. They offer all all these th- different things, and mm. so it's, it's just a level above. Yes. Um, kind of your quick uh, in and out. Yeah. And I'll also say the leaders of this company are very benevolent. They're very involved in the community. They're very much about a holistic. Yeah. If it comes quick, it goes quick. They're very much about a long standing. You know pillar of this just most healthy business you yeah. can want to the, be a part of. The thing they also, you constantly seeing them do is they'll go out and buy this technology that is mm. s- just for cutting their patients, edge. cutting yeah. edge. They could stick with the old technology and stay and mm. stay there at the status quo, but they don't, mm. they don't care to do that. They want to give their patients the very, yes. very best service. And yes. so that's when they go and pursue that. So, so very powerful. Yeah. Steadfast business, the business we all think of wanting to own uh, and you think of the companies in this category, and they're very transactional, buy one, get one today sort of thing. Um, so I would say the goal for this company, by contrast, uh, and I just happen to know because we've been involved with them, is to help people know, like, trust, and believe in the quality that they're wanting to offer long before the sale. Mm-hmm. Because if you wake up today and go, oh, shoot, my glasses got crunched by my five-year-old. I got to run out and get a pair of glasses. And all other things being the same, you're going to run and try to buy the cheapest thing, right? Or the cheapest, fastest thing. Yeah. Uh, but what, what has been the um, uh, anchor of their branding campaign has been don't settle for less than the best. Mm-hmm. When you go through the moments of your day with slightly cheaper or not perfectly paired lenses or things that don't fit right or things that don't have the right protections and coatings on them, you're sacrificing quality of life. So if I've believed that over these years of getting... Um, to getting to know them through their advertising and then through the community things they do, I'm going to go, huh, at this moment of need, um, I've either got a trusted partner and I can call them, they've already got my script, or I'm going to um, you know, at least consider them before just jumping right into some promotion or discount. That's right. Um, so it's not buy XYZ for 50% off, and this is important because this is about the result. This is yeah. about what are you trying to make happen, and they say... We want people to value us for higher quality, not yep. for the discounts we provide, and that yep. happens to be their goal. Mm-hmm. And when it comes to buying media, um, your goal will drive the type of media you need to buy. And there's two questions we ask when it comes to getting the best deal or choosing the best media. That's how many people are we reaching, mm-hmm. and what are the qualities of the people that we're reaching? Um, how big is the audience, and what is the quality of that audience, right? Yeah. Um, we measure in the industry that we're in, like a, a competent media buyer will measure the reach of your media by how many thousands of people you reach. We mm-hmm. say, what does it cost us to reach 1,000 people or what's known as a cost per thousand or if you've ever seen CPM. Yep. So we're going to stay out of nerd territory, but I'm going to give you some very simple third grade math to use. Um, you get the number, like that CPM number, which is just really the uh, measure of efficiency. It's like your miles per gallon, if you want to think of it. Yes, that's great. You know, driving in a car, right? So if I put in $1,000, how many people do I reach? Mm-hmm. Um, or what is the CPM? And so 
Um, these guys are asking about, should we trade our TV dollars for online video dollars? And the CPM we know to be true for the TV, uh, the broadcast that they're buying, uh, is $4.86. So what for a deal. $4.86. Um, they spend, they're reaching 1,000. Their ad's being seen 1,000 times, right? Yep. We just so happen to have millions of dollars of experience in online video, and I pulled like the most parallel case studies mm -hmm. and, and got an average of uh, when we're showing this, these ads on YouTube, by the way, is the cheapest way to do online video uh, in, in general, mm -hmm. $19.44. Do the math, and they're paying about five, sorry, uh, four to five times four, more yeah. to reach people on online video. And that's really a best case scenario. Yeah. Um, so for this, uh, I, I literally pulled two campaigns. One, we spent $50,000 on TV. One, we spent $50,000 on online video on YouTube. The TV ads for that $50,000 investment were seen 10,286,000 times. And the YouTube ads were seen 2,500,000 times. Literally, like almost, you know, a little more than four times as much. Yep. So on a good day, on a great day, mm -hmm. you're reaching a fourth of the people on online video. Yeah. Okay. Um, most online video is going to be more like a fifty to sixty dollars CPM. Mm -hmm. You're talking about OTT. A lot of people ask about should I be on Hulu. A lot of people ask, you know, should I go to this um, really fancy streaming service my cable rep is offering me? Mm -hmm. And it sounds really really cool because they're like, we can reach a forty two year old mom with, you know, yeah. two kids in the house, a golden retriever, and she likes yoga. <laughs> yeah. And you're going, that's awesome. But then when you realize what you're paying for it, you're paying like, you know, 10, Sometimes 15, 20 time. time, yeah. times, you know, more to reach that person. Yeah. And so you go back to the goal. How crucial is it for me to reach the mom of the golden retriever? Or if I just reach her and a group of her friends mm -hmm. and her family and I become famous in my town or my region, that is often um, driving the result that most brick and mortar and regional companies want to work with. Or want want to have, yeah. Um, so that is that's the basic math. You're probably reaching a really small fraction of the people when you take a broadcast media and try to put it in a digital media instead. Yeah, simply because the market charges so much more than that. For the record, for all of my digital wizards that are listening right now, I do think in time that will change. I think digital media will get cheaper. And I think the audiences are continuing to get bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, but I see for the next five to 10 years, that's probably still the case. Yeah. And, and if your goal is to become famous and have people choose you before they go searching and looking for you online, broadcast is a better investment in most cases. Yeah. And that's, that's the approach most people, when they ask us a question like this, should I go OTT? Should I go YouTube? A lot of times it's in the name of that targeting, right? Mm. Reaching that very, very specific person I sell a home improvement service, so I only want homeowners. I don't right. want renters. Uh, y there, there are different things like that. And um, usually in the name of targeting and, and in any media, on Facebook, on YouTube, mm. any place you go, the more targeting you apply, the higher your CPMs get. Mm. And that, that is where you end up costing yourself. Yes. You get, in this case, we're talking about you know, $5 against $20, 4X. But yeah. if you start adding homeowners, if you start adding women, if you start adding all of these very specific Geographic things, areas. You're, you're right. going to get up in the $40 range and you're talking about 10 times the cost yes. to reach those same people. And at a local level, it's just extremely expensive. Yeah. And you say, so, so we, we tend to think that, ooh, this magic person, I've reached the perfect person. That's what makes the ad work. And I've got to tell you, you are, quote, the perfect person for like thousands of dollars worth of um, ads that get shown to you in a week. Yeah. And has that made you buy? Not necessarily. <laughs> yeah, and, and I don't live in a vacuum. Yes. You know, if, if you're the perfect person, but I'm not, Yes. Uh, the truth is you're still going to ask my opinion when you, ha when you need a service, yes. right? Hey, ask. I need an electrician. Do you know a guy? Yeah, I've got a guy. I don't even know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I wasn't the right target, but I, I didn't live in a vacuum and yes. neither did you. So the most profitable goal for most businesses, certainly service businesses and certainly businesses that have a long-term buying cycle um, and big ticket items, mm -hmm. the most profitable goal is what is the word on the street about you? Yes. What do people think and feel long before they have this super targeted, super quote unquote perfect time to need you and buy you and click and mm -hmm. 
just look at your own life. Like, look at your own life and how you buy. You don't go, um, in most cases, for things like doctors, for things like roofers, for things like HVAC, for things like attorneys. You don't go, holy smokes, that's a perfect ad. I'm going to click on it and buy that now. Yeah. The need arises, and when the need arises at that point, it's what has happened to you up until that point mm-hmm. that really makes the difference. Yep. And competitively, if you're the one that has done that well, you're the one that wins. Mm-hmm. If you're the one that has not done that well, you are left to chance, and you are a result on a search engine page, and it comes down to price, convenience, and hassle, and how much are you going to discount, how fast are you going to deliver me mm-hmm. the service, and how close are you to my house, yep. and how quick can you get me in. Not your favorite customer. Not Probably. your favorite customer. Those are the customers that are looking for a ripoff. <laughs> cheap and <laughs> they're, easy. They're looking to rip you off in a way and, yeah. and uh, get, get it as cheap as they possibly can. So the math says broadcast uh, wins the media equation by a lot, um, the reach equation. And mm-hmm. let's talk about that second one, the quality of the people. Mm-hmm. It does matter in certain cases. Um Let's talk about this mom who has a golden retriever, two kids, and does yoga. Um, There's a time where there's a perfect product that only applies to her. Mm -hmm. And this is probably going to be more in the e-com world. Mm -hmm. There's a perfect offer that's going to apply to her. Um, If you are outside of a local territory and your your audience is so um, specific, think mountain bikers. Enthusiast type of brands, for sure. Think Yeah, enthusiasts of... You know, owners of um, Taylor acoustic guitars mm-hmm. or, you know, fans of Led Zeppelin or yeah. some really weird band, right? Yeah. Your, your, your audience is probably too small to exist in like really small pockets like a city. Mm-hmm. So you are thinking more about nationwide targeting. And if you're delivering your service or product online, that is where digital targeting starts to become a thing. Yes. And I will say that the wider you go... When you're buying nationwide, the CPMs do get a little bit cheaper. Mm -hmm. So that efficiency equation isn't still as near as good as broadcast, but it's a little better than if you're trying to cram that in like a, you know, yeah, even a city the size of Atlanta, right? Yeah. So um, if you've got a specific offer, a specific discount, a promotion, something I can click, what we would call direct response, um, which we do a lot of, even for this client, yeah, we take a certain part of their budget and we put it into that direct response thing. We have some really specific like products for kids for them. Mm-hmm. There is a time and a place to do that. But mm-hmm. by and large, when the goal, going back to strategy, strategy first, what are we trying to make happen? When the goal is to become famous, people like me, people choose me, people trust me more than my competitors. The goal is to reach as many people as possible every week, talk to them about something that matters to them, and then let time and your reputation build a yeah. result from there. And that that's something we've seen with, uh, you said, every week. And I mm. think that's an important frequency. It's a really important factor inside of this is on YouTube, mm. especially if I have a wider audience, even if, I've, even if I'm just targeting my local geo, yeah. let's just say for this client, we just wanted to get on YouTube and target the same area that TV would cover. Yeah. Uh, the issue is, I'm not necessarily going to reach the same people Mm, every week. So important. So there are how many how many people in our DMA here? Roughly a million. A million. In the million. So I've got I'm reaching a million people inside of this this target. Well, the truth is I don't want to reach all of them one time. Yes. I want to reach a select set of them over and over and over and over again every single week. Yes. And so I Roy Williams is you know, famous around here for saying, would you rather reach, you know, 100% or convince, sorry, would you rather convince uh, 100% of the population 10% of the way, or would you rather convince 10% of the population 100% of the way? That's what it's all about. These, these broadcast audiences, even though they're big, a very key mechanism, if you're buying your media right, is showing up in the same programs and the same frequency. Um, By the way, big part of the growth that's happened in this equation for this, you know, person we're talking about. Um, has come from a very couple select set of programs that we said we're going to make you famous with this sixty thousand audience. Yeah, and that sixty thousand person audience over a year's time, you know, is exposed to these messages probably fifty times a piece per person. Like, there's mm-hmm. not probably a person in that audience that hasn't seen this company at least fifty times. Yeah, and so they're 
you're convinced that 100% of the way, and we're just waiting for that moment when they go, oh, yep, it is time to do something with my vision or my kid's vision or my mom's vision yep. or my aunt's vision or my sister's vision or my coworker's vision when they ask me about it, right? And so you're becoming famous in a set of audiences. And YouTube, all digital media make that extremely hard. The mm-hmm. platform itself, the way impressions are delivered is not like people are coming to the same program over and over. Yeah. The way they're delivered is at random whenever the algorithm decides to throw them in there when they have room for it, essentially. Yes. And, and so you might see it once today. It might be two months before you see it again. Yeah. Right? And and you can measure frequency, in mm-hmm. fairness, on YouTube, on yes. uh, OTT, Hulu, those kinds of things. You can measure that frequency, that repeat rate uh, for the customer because we want the customer to not see our ad one time. Mm. We want to see it over and over. We try to get at least three times in seven nights sleep. Yep. And... We can't guarantee that on YouTube, but we can reasonably guarantee that if we're buying some sort of TV program that's consistent. So, so so same basic area, the YouTube factor I just gave you. You know what the case study said? Hmm. Uh, When I look back, this is a real campaign we ran, ran, by the way. We spent $50,000 of a client's money, who, by the way, was fully on board with it being an experiment. Mm -hmm. And they knew all these things we were telling them, like, we want to try it anyway. This is the one where it costs four times as much (laughs) to... Yep. Yep. But very similar area, same thing going on. You know what the average frequency was? Hmm. Like 2.2. Wow. In six months' time. Wow. And on TV, that would have been 20 to 30 in six months' time. Yeah. So the average so, person of, those, of that viewership yes. only saw their ad 2.2 And by times. the way, this is the even scarier metric, 87% of them skipped the ad and didn't watch it. And that's a real thing with online video. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not saying it's useless. We do use it. But in a intrusive broadcast environment, somebody has to sit there and at least hear or see the ad if they're watching the program, mm-hmm. which, by the way, is also measured by Nielsen and Com- yep. Comscore. And, and if you're placing yeah. TV uh, in this case, you're measuring it, you're watching it. You can prove that that ad ran to its full extent, 30 seconds, 30 15 seconds, seconds yeah. 60 seconds, whatever you're running that it ran within the window, the program yep. that you bought, it is all proven well, and all true. And only 13% of the time in this other YouTube case study uh, did the ad run 100% of the time before somebody clicked off on it. And so effectively, if you want to really look at the CPM of people watching the ad 100% of the time, on TV, it was still that $4.86. On YouTube, it was $149.57. That would have watched the whole 30-second ad or, yep. or been exposed to the full ad. Yep. Wow. And so I know there there are some, man, there are some, we've made some nerds really mad right now because they're going, they're about to throw darts and they're saying, dude, don't you know broadcast has lost half of its audience? And don't you know online video takes up half, of, you know, half the all streaming? A couple things. We are going to talk about that in a few weeks about um, what's actually going on in the media industry. Mm-hmm. It, not, I'm the first one to tell you uh, broadcast has deteriorated. Um, the most recent study I looked uh, in, the, in the last couple of years, 5% broadcast audience has gone away. Most of the cable audience is what's fragmented, just so mm. you know. Yeah. Uh, cable, think about cable and satellite and the old school way of, you know, streaming or uh, watching, you know, that type of programming. Uh, broadcast, your local channels, specifically in news and specifically in things that people can't get anywhere else, those are still holding strong and they're a bargain because you can reach so many people um, if you're on a local basis. And so that's... Yeah. Largely who we serve, small business owners that have a regional presence or, you know, a strong local presence. And um, it's not the end-all, be-all. The media does not, is not the only thing that makes you successful. But when it comes time to become a company of impact and a company people have heard of, Mm -hmm. um, the leverage and the amount of people you reach and the intrusiveness of that messaging is just so much stronger than the digital world can currently deliver for the same amount of money. Yeah. So I'm going to throw a question at you that okay. we did not have planned. Ooh, uh, but we've we've been talking about this a little bit more. Uh, the question was actually originally from this company. They were asking about an election year next Ooh. year. Hmm. Uh, we've talked about the value of planning out your broadcast schedule hmm. prior to the election year. Where where does that show up? How how is you that know, powerful? I'm a procrastinator usually. And most people are procrastinators on this. Uh huh. I plan to stop procrastinating next year. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's just plan funny. Um, 
Okay, so planning <laughs> out. Uh, yeah, so we're we're currently sitting in fourth quarter of 2023, and the thing you need to be thinking about is get your orders in for your broadcast media now. Start hmm. negotiating now because the way the industry works. Uh, first of all, you're going to get the best deal if you plan annually. Yeah. Um, and in most cases, there is still room for adjusting later. But if you're saying, Mr. You know, station manager, I want to commit to you this amount of money. I think this is going to be in line with my reach and frequency goals. I think my business could sustain this. We're in growth mode or we're just we're maintaining our brand. Mm-hmm. I'm going to commit this stack of money to you in October, November. And I'm not going to wait till the spring to see kind of sort of how the holidays went. I'm going to say, nope, I'm thinking full wide ahead. I'm going to yep. give you an annual plan. You will get better treatment even next November mm-hmm. because you were the first person in their system. And the way this works is that by securing your buy now, you are sort of one of the first people in the buy. And when these big politicians come and say, kick the local advertisers out, I'll pay two or three times more, you're just lower down the list. It can still happen, yeah. especially that first or that you know last really aggressive weeks leading up to election times. Um, but it's way, way less likely. And I'll add that if you've been consistent all year, a, a couple of weeks of disruption in your messaging, it's probably not the end of the world. Mm-hmm. Um, and you usually can negotiate a better deal for those spots that you get kicked out on because the station does feel bad and they do yeah. want to honor your business and they yep. do still want to keep that relationship. So they'll, after the, you know, after the big spots run, they'll yep. give you a better deal to put that back in the mix or at least a really fair deal. So you might even get more for your money. Yeah. Um, so I, that's a really great question. Yeah. Plan now, uh, commit annually. Yeah. Don't think small. Think, what do I want to have happen? I'm going in, I'm a strong business. I'm going to act strong. The economy and the headwinds and the politicians are throwing junk everywhere, but I'm not going to get caught up in that. I'm going to show up for my people with a good message of optimism and stand on my quality and my values. And I'm a company that believes in you and doing business for you and doing business with you. And this is the way we do it. If you are the one being consistent right now, Mm -hmm. you will come out so much stronger out of this season of doubt. Yeah. And you will be the strong brand. And you're not just going to grow as much as you would have. You'll steal market share mm-hmm. while all of your other competitors were weak, while all of your other competitors were staying home, while all of your other competitors were pulling their chips off the table and making small-minded decisions. You're the strong one. You're the preferred one. And you are the one that's going to be here in what we call legendary business status. Love it. So use online video. When it's appropriate, when you need the targeting, we have a product that has a direct response mechanism or an otherwise really strong need for targeting. But if you are trying to be a legacy, strongly branded business, use the media that's going to deliver the most amount of people for the least amount of money, as long as you can commit to doing it consistently. Awesome. Hey, before we get going, uh, if you haven't picked up a copy of Brandon's book, The Maven Marketer, you can do that on Amazon. Um, and and the, the hardback and oh. audiobook will be released this week. Wow. You heard it here first. So uh, you can also, I, I will send you a free signed copy by mm. the author. Uh, I will personally pin him down. Mm. I like that. that. You like yeah. that? Okay. I thought you, that's, that's your kind of joke, yeah. I think. Um, and we'll get you a copy. If you send us a question, send us, uh, if you're going to commit to that, annual TV schedule next year, send us your ad. We'll review it on oh, the absolutely. on the podcast. Send us your schedule. We'll we'll review it. If we could review it in silence if you don't yeah. want it out in the open. All you have to do is send an email to Maven Monday at Frank and Maven.com. You can sign up for our regular emails. We send hmm. two a week. You can sign up for those at Frank and Anytime you want encouragement, uh, you'll get notes from these these uh, videos. It's all powerful stuff. We're working hard for you guys. 2024 is going to be a great year, despite what they're trying to tell you. If you enjoyed this, please hit the subscribe button. Share it with somebody. Forward it with somebody to somebody that you love, like, or otherwise want to do well. And send your questions to Maven Monday at frankandmaven.com. We'll be back here every Monday answering your real-life marketing questions because marketers who can't teach you why are just a fancy lie. Have a great week. 